The day's top business news now with the day's top business presenter, well, at least for today anyway, um, Brian Green is with us here on set. Sorry, Brian. R ringing endorsement. Exactly. We're going to start with some potential for some major economic repercussions. This is from the poisoning of the Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, as Berlin hints that the affair could affect a huge natural gas project with Moscow. And sorry, Stuart Navalny, of course, is still in Berlin recovering from what German authorities say was an attempted assassination via the Russian chemical nerve agent known as Novichok. German officials have already threatened possible sanctions against Russia over the poisoning. The government is now suggesting that those sanctions could include the Nord Stream 2 project. That's a multi-billion euro, 1,200 kilometer long pipeline to transport Russian natural gas to Europe. The construction on the pipeline is nearly finished, but it's been stalled for almost a year over the threat of sanctions from the U.S., which fears the project will make Germany too dependent on Russian energy. Catherine Viet has details. The future of a multi-billion euro joint German-Russian gas pipeline now in doubt, as Berlin presses the Kremlin for answers in the poisoning of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Navalny fell ill while on a flight to Moscow and is now being treated at a hospital in Berlin. Doctors there say Navalny was poisoned with the nerve agent Novichuk, a claim the Kremlin rejects. As European officials mull sanctions, the German foreign minister warned a lack of cooperation from Russia could cause the German government to rethink its stance on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Maas also admitting halting the project would hurt European interests, too. There are still good reasons for this pipeline. They've always been there. Otherwise, this project would not exist. More than 100 European companies are involved in this project, half of them from Germany, and taking measures against this project would affect them as well. Nord Stream 2 would deliver Russian natural gas directly to Germany under the Baltic, bypassing Ukraine. Only about 150 kilometers of the twin pipeline project remains to be built. It's owned and will be operated by Russian state-controlled energy giant Gazprom. The project is not without controversy. The U.S., as well as several states in Eastern Europe and the Baltics, have repeatedly expressed concerns about the pipeline warning that it will increase Russian President Vladimir Putin's geopolitical influence. Construction has been stalled for nearly a year over the threat of sanctions from the U.S. Now some of the companies involved say there's an increasing possibility the project will never be completed. And checking in on the day's trading action now, European indexes on the rise at the open Monday. The energy sector lagging a bit amid those tensions between Germany and Russia. London's FTSE 100, though, up six-tenths of a percent, despite the U.K. government's apparent brinksmanship in Brexit negotiations, the deadline looming there. The Cat Courant here in Paris also up around six-tenths of a percent. Frankfurt DAX is up nearly three-quarters of a percent at the open. Asian indexes mostly lost ground today amid turmoil in the tech sector. The Nikkei in Tokyo down around half a percent. Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hong Seng both significantly in the red, as the Trump administration says it may blacklist China's largest chipmaker from receiving American parts. The Kospi in Seoul, the lone gainer of the day as Samsung shares end of the day there up some 1.8 percent. And finally for business, the Australian government announced Monday that it's reached agreements with two pharmaceutical firms for the supply and production of potential COVID-19 vaccines. The deals worth some 1.7 billion Australian dollars will see Britain's Oxford University partner with AstraZeneca while Australia's Queensland University pairs up with pharma firm CSL. Those two partnerships are slated to provide nearly 85 million doses to be produced in Melbourne. Prime Minister Scott Morrison touting the deal on Monday while reminding that those numbers will depend on the vaccines being proven safe and effective. Here he is. So to both develop and produce that vaccine here in Australia and produce the AstraZeneca vaccine in Australia. So that is giving us a sovereign capacity to get Australians what they will need should both of those vaccines prove successful as they go through their trials. Important to reiterate, Stuart, that those deals only any good if those vaccines actually work. Well, yes, good point. <laughs> Not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. No. Far from guaranteed. Thank you very much, Brian Green, with business with his own cash injection. I see what he did there on France 24.